in the past, the repression. Depression, more laws, more jails, more hopelessness, poverty in society, until it reaches a certain period. You live that law, maybe like the law of the Bible. To do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You could murder somebody on the rails, and chance out of five, they'd never catch him because you caught the next train out. You'd be in a big city, and what does it show? Transit killed. They don't investigate that. So there's a code. It's like Vietnam. When everybody was packing, it was amazing how well everybody got along. This idea of getting back on the rail it gives you back down to more of a true humanity. Down the rails and stuff, people don't ask other people their name. They don't get into your personal life whatsoever. They might say, where are you going, just to get conversation, but they don't get into your business. And a lot of them are on the run, and people don't like to give their real names. You know, there's always that slim or steam train or caribou. Mountain Jewel and stuff like that. They well, basically handled back home as bear grease, being for the fact that I was from the mountains. And it's stuck ever since. So. I was born in uh, Washington State. That's where I was born. Americans are made up of transient people. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Probably dead set in the middle of the United States north. Minneapolis is one of those difficult places that they keep extra bulls and uh, special agents on there because of this being this halfway point. It was definitely a hot yard, talked about a lot. regular railroad terms is your high track. Anything that's on the high line is going to move. But they also use that same terminology for traveling on the northwest up from, say, Minneapolis to Seattle. And you can travel that route that goes up through uh, Fargo. You go up to Minot, you go to Haver, then from Haver to Whitefish, Spokaloo, and so on. And, and that's about it. Basically, the high line goes through Minnesota, North Dakota, and Montana. This time I got out of Mini with Caribou, Scott, old friend of mine from the Seattle area. And Scott and I were on our way back from Brit, Iowa, the Hobo Convention. We arranged to hook up in Mini and ride some of the ways back to, to Seattle. See you next time. Scott is friendly. He has good natural wit, talks a lot, more than I do, almost to a point where he becomes very uncomfortable in silence. Room service. You in the fucking holiday inn, huh? I think that's it. This time when we got out of Mini, I used the old Seattle Slim technique. The guy who first rode the rails was a good old man. Caribou, he went and checked some knockers. He said, oh, yeah, they're departing down at that yard. And uh, here comes a hot shot, and we just got it. You know, get me out of Mini.
Castro on the high line. But why would he start heading west? He dropped a lot of shit off on the way. I had a, I, you know, I kept moving upstream, which is why I think he lost a couple of days there. There's definitely a switch up here where you either go north or you go west. Yeah. Scott got some of that uh, grass growing wild uh, along the tracks. Stuff that grew during World War II, the hemp making rope. Right alongside the tracks, it was like seven feet high. For me, it wasn't bad because I don't drink. Scott was happy. Or you can dig for two days. The snow back here is heavy. It freezes and melts a little, it freezes. A little, melts a little at the day, gets a little soft, compacts. And then at night, it gets so fucking cold, it freezes solid. Yes. Ice. Scott and I go back quite a ways. I knew Scott when he was like 15, but sometimes he gets bizarre, chancy, risky. Green sunglasses, round, look like John Lennon and carrying a pound of weed with him. I said, Scott, you're gonna have to walk alone. Who knows where the hobo goes? Standard answer for somebody that, you know, says, out of the clear blue, you know, goes, hey, where's he going? Where's he going? You know, like getting too inquisitive, you know, and you go, hey, who knows where the hobo goes? And you know, there's there's something that does something to people, even if you look ragged and you got a few teeth missing and you're walking off that rail, there's a magic about that hobo thing because but they can still kind of imagine living in the rain and when it's cold like it is now, you know, and the snow comes and Jesus Christ, they're going to eat mission food and so on. Uh, but I like it because it keeps your shit hard. Looks like someone hit camp here. Yeah. We was here with Peyton there. Look Here's there, I got Seattle something. Slim, Bear Grease. Okay. Bear Grease. Yeah. There's mine right up there. Yeah. Then the bandit. Pan Shakely. And it sounds like a drunk. Crazy Larry. Hippie, hippie Lou, I know him. KGB. Killer Green, bud, that is. Love all, trust a few do wrong, did I wonder who wrote that. Hey. Probably what? some smart fuck. Probably some fucking one hell of a hobo. Yes. Yes. Ride, ride, ride a train. And a good fuck to boot. Is that yours, too? Seattle? Yeah. Next stop, Helltown. Yeah. Fargo used to be a good town because there was very few people that passed through Fargo. But it just so happened being a small enough town, a lot of these guys ride this DNA check that they get, alcohol check, crazy check, and they could collect that check in a day. That's when you're sane enough to live within society, yet you're not together enough to be able to get up every morning and go to work. Consequently, the word spread, went down the tracks. Pretty soon, instead of like 15 bows going down to the place to get a check, you had 300. Then you had 500. 
and it just seemed like this last summer that particular case t uh, took place and all of a sudden you had 500 bows all getting drunk not all of them but you know the ones that did drink which most of them do and partying on the first of the month next thing you know they're breaking wine bottles and people are breaking into places and the townspeople along with the railroad and so on the cops they had enough so they put on a real hardcore discouragement shot they couldn't stop the checks but what they could do is they could get you for loitering they could get you for vagrancy they could uh, the bulls up in the Dellsworth yard which is just up the line from moorhead if they caught you on the train you got five days automatically in jail no questions you automatically did five days It was a definite place that uh, you had to be leery, had to watch out. Police followed you out of town. So they wanted to get the idea across to get them out. You're not wanted here. And sooner or later, enough discouragement will be made, they'll leave and it'll drop back into normal. I don't know, but I'd like to do some warm meat. U.S. Constitution says no money shall be drawn from the Treasury but in consequence of appropriations made by law. Hmm. God bless America. Yeah. Seems like they've, uh, what the hell, is a deficit anyway, then. <laughs> ain't, it, ain't it money that they spent that they ain't got? Yeah. Who knows what'll happen? Gunman robs woman near Fargo Bank. Want to help me next time? That bag of money was pretty big. Ooh, maybe we see what the weather's going to be. NASA ready to launch after getting judges okay. Mm. The hell is that about? It's got a high high temperature, high area though, through the Montana and Take here it. and through North Dakota. So uh, let's see, winter hits northern Rockies. Man, we're gonna hit a hard winter down Rockies, man. Is that gonna that's gonna bring the cold in, isn't it? Uh huh. So it's gonna drop be cold by all as, the way across. Drop by as much as 35 degrees in the Rockies. Well, we'll have to get some more blankets, maybe. I got one more. Yeah, I don't know if that'll be enough though. South Dakota is about the same, 30s and 40s, in, into the low 20s at night. So we're going to get out of this town so we can build a fire somewhere. You wonder what kind of laws they got in North Dakota? No, they're all right. Shut up now. I can eat as much as I want. Yeah, I know. So when y'all gonna marry I ain't gonna marry him. I ain't gonna marry no man creature. <laughs> the mission in Fargo got started by some woman who uh, donated to people who are on the rail. Actually ended up to be a home base for a lot of guys that didn't leave. Like they call them in the book, a home guard. But it was a nice mission. The food was good, and they had a little church next to it. And people seemed very friendly enough for the city like that. Where are you guys headed now, South? Oh, Montana. Crossed over, actually, from Washington. Picking out all that Go down to the missions, and you talk to the guys. And some of these guys rode every rail there is to ride. Some of that information is good. Some of it pays off, some of it don't. You have to listen. It is quite a telegraph, though, because you pick up what yard's hot and who's been killed. This last trip, there was quite a few people got killed, mostly crushed in cars. This is one reason why Burlington Northern and these other outfits are really uh, trying to discourage the riding. Yeah, just stay behind the Delworth uh, Tower, uh -huh. go around that fence line, then we'll see jungles on the left. And just get off in them. Don't 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 sit around. There's a bull come up in there too. Yeah, he's, he's, he's about this tall, about this wide. <laughs> and yeah. his guns about that long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I see him going up down the yeah, I was here last summer coming out of Iowa and he was had that spotlight going up and down the Between area. April first and August first, there was eight hundred applications for that check. Eight hundred applications. Christ.
love President Bush. <laughs> his, his ruby red lips are just the way he signs the bills. <laughs> we put a lot of people in a bad position because they're fucking taking away rights, left and right. Left and right. And they don't give the people a chance to say what they really feel or how they think. Paul Harvey put it a good way one time. He said, it's like a big piece of bologna. They keep taking away a little right, a little right, a little right. And everybody says, oh, that's such a little bit, don't worry about it. Yeah. Until finally you're down to the skin. So and they say, well, what the hell, all we got is the skin left, so why not take that? <laughs> you see that uh, old jug of night train there? America's fucked. I commend the young people today for not really just getting totally fucked out. You know, Most young people want to do a good job. But they, there ain't no job here for them in the first place. And if there are, they have to, they're programmed to do what they're told and not yeah. to do quality and fuck you know they, they can't they at, can't, least, at least during the Kennedy they can't time go to work with a little bit of pride because it gets their pride is in their back pocket if they want that job right. otherwise they go without work yeah and then if you That's go the it. other way you're misfits you somebody see? will come along like Kennedy though it has to get poor enough and bad enough that's that, just uh, what people we need. Will fucking, uh, you know, the old people, man. Grandma, my, my grandma, grandma, just say that, man. We need, we need, we need another candidate. We need yeah. someone. We need someone to slap this fucking people, these politicians, and say. Well, what they're getting away with now, taking away these rights without anybody voting on it. Who the well, fuck are they? Just, maybe that's why we live the way we do. Yeah. We take them when they're there, and we have to. And yeah, what the fuck? There's one person gonna say. Nothing. That's just dead. What the fuck's 10,000 people gonna say together? Nothing. Well, what they do say is gonna be fucking backed up by what? Nothing. That's it. <laughs> you can't do nothing about it. It takes everyone to do nothing. <laughs> We walked out of the city of Fargo up to Dellsworth and had to go way back in the bushes to catch one out of there because that was hot too. At one point, we couldn't even hardly go on the tracks. There were so many bulls with surveillances. You know, you had to hide in the bushes to catch a train and sneak out. Even the car knockers hooking up, which are normally pretty friendly, uh, would say, hey, careful, the agents are on there. They're up and down. Well, then, if they know where you are and they know you're here, eventually they're going to be out here, right? And they're going to be looking for you. They can harass the shit out of you if they want to. It's not that you're going to jump up there with a lawyer and go, what's legal and what's not legal. You're hopping their train and you're trespassing. They could actually shoot you, you know, I mean, if it really came down to it. The guy that shot you going across that rail is not going to go to jail. They might move him out of the county and the country, but he ain't going to jail for shooting you. Oh. Low line. Huh? Ah. That was our ride. Yeah, but there'll be some more coming through, he says. Well, he wasn't sure if it was gonna go to West Fargo or not for sure. He doesn't know when they're gonna leave. But, but did he check? He just got on a shift. He told me uh, about two guys that died last month were load shifted. So oh, he's, uh, train yeah, two bones. People in the yards. Oh, trying out one that load shifted on them? Uh-huh. Yeah. Slammed them to load shift and smashed them. That bull rides a, uh, a green late model car. I didn't seem real, <laughs> real impressed. Huh? People being around here. He didn't? He wasn't too happy about that. He doesn't know, uh, yeah. So the better we get on a train and get out of this fucking yard, the better off we're gonna be, yeah. period. There's gonna be something else to leave him shortly here. 
want, if we, you know, if we could, we could take a chance. Jamestown, this one's mine on. So we're leaving right after, uh, right after a bit here. Good. Yeah, I was talking when you said there's a little snow over there in Montana. They got a little bit of snow already. There's a lot of uh, renegades out there, you know, that really bring down the name, stealing, stripping copper, uh, even getting to the point of rolling old drums and stuff. But you got some good ones out there, and that sand tips it or you know, perpetrates it. The hobo works and wanders, where the hobo started from anyway. He started from back, way back. Christ had probably started way back in time, you know, but as far as the hobos for the rail goes, most of the hobos really built the rail. In fact, before the old man died at Burlington, he had a standard saying, hobos ride free. And that was like in the Cascades in that area. Because the hobos actually, he depended on those hobos to come in to lay down the tile and the rails and so on, and they used a lot of manpower. You know, and it's, uh, so they had that saying, a hobo works and wanders, a tramp dreams and wanders, and a bum drinks and wanders. He told me that. I don't know where he got it from, but it's uh, not that you can't drink a little bit when you're, you're a hobo. But it's the fact that when we're talking about drink, we're talking about a full-time job. The old-time hobo seems like had more honor, and probably for the fact that he worked. You know, he went from place to place, and he worked here and worked there, and then he moved on. Where the modern-type hobo, a lot of them that probably want to work but can't find it. So in turn, he turns around to the next avenue, which is food stamps, uh, DNA check, uh, blood bank, and so on like that. So it actually takes that something away from him where he's not really earning it, but it takes it out of his personality. So maybe some say, why not steal? 
where the other ones had a chance to go out and work for it, and if somebody stopped and questioned about it, you know, they would say, hey, fuck you, I made my money. You know, it ain't your money, I work for it. They had that kind of right. Travel the rails like that. You know, you're traveling with another individual. And, you know, sometimes you get uh, cramped up in those cars together, and sometimes you get down in those jungles together. And, and some of those places are not so easy to mix with civilians. So you just got each other. Pretty soon you talk each other to death. So the next thing you know, it's like, God, I just need to get a break from this guy for a while. So it's going to want me to ride to uh, Seattle. He says, No, I'm not going to ride that one. I'm waiting. I'm going to ride the next one in the morning. And he said, I want to go tonight. And I said, go. He said, nobody's stopping you. So he got really, you know, huff, huff. The fact that he probably needed a break from me. We always bark friends, Scott and I. But he had to catch that boxcar out when I caught a hot shot the next day. Like, um, like the chance that you can ride with somebody, you know, and you can ride here and there, and you can have your your thoughts is probably like uh, being holed up in the city somewhere. Everything's moving so fast all the time that you do, you never really have time to collect thought. And you ride with somebody else out on the rail, and uh, and you'll be sleeping. You may be looking out the box car, or the green car, and you think of this and you think of that, but there's always something to break it up, and it's dealing with that complete lone loneliness. And that first loneliness is kind of like a, a scary thing because all of a sudden you're not you're not used to dealing with just yourself, you know. And some of these thoughts that come through your mind, and and you know, and all of a sudden, and maybe a little bit of a scared thing of, uh, you know, you got to figure that even though you've done a lot of the stuff yourself before many times, you still all of a sudden think everything's up to you. You know, you fall asleep, you want to get off and whitefish, you. <coughs> Then, the, then you got to stand by that box car when you get close enough so you don't fall asleep going through that town. Or, uh, you know, little stuff, you know. But uh, you start thinking those thoughts that you don't think. Kind of like being out on a ship when you stand out on a lookout and all of a sudden you're all by yourself and some of those thoughts come rolling through your mind, who the women you've been with and, and who, you know, what they're like and, uh, and uh, the people you remember. And like Bob Dylan said, you know, you usually remember the painful things that you've been through with people, they bring you closer together. But it's uh, uh, that those thoughts are just almost impossible to come by unless you're totally alone and dealing totally with yourself. You know, and you just, uh, it's hard to describe and how those feelings come into you because you're looking around and there ain't nobody there. Minot in North Dakota is one of my favorite little towns. It's, it's an old west type town, a real old, old town with old buildings. The people are generally uh, farmers in that area, so they're, they're fairly friendly. Anybody that's been through the hard life, so to speak. It's small enough that it's pretty easy to maneuver around in the town. You know, here, and plus the fact that it's a definite railroad town. So they're used to boats traveling in and out. Maybe probably because there are not so many people that come through or get off at Minot. Especially you get uh, 
a lot of those guys that are traveling cross country do like following those checks, so they're just going from city to city. They don't get off at the small towns. He got floor on this side there, on the grainer. We are sitting on the grain over here. He gloves over on that side over there. No, I did. I had to hang on to his goddamn feet. Back up, back up in here. Hang on to him, or else he's gonna fall. Yeah. He slipped between the two cars. Just got him yeah. just in time. Or else he's gonna be gone. And mine on a couple of local little time. gin mills that are located right alongside the track. They had some yeah. characters, old uh, Minot yeah. Louie. I've seen him go. time after time. You know, he's always gonna ride just somewhere, but he usually gets a little bit too juiced to make it. Dummy. Did he even uh, realize, appreciate it, or did he go? Yeah. Oh, he did good. Yeah. He said, thank you, Louie, help me. Yeah, he's bet. I wish he'd been gone. Well, sometimes the eyes are bad. Oh, I know, Louie, why not, Louie? No, no, he's no, got his bedroll, and he's that. ready to ride, and, and he's part Indian, so of course I'm a little Indian, too, that don't matter. But he's uh, definitely been on the blues trail a long time, longer than I was. He gets just ready to ride, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, here comes another bottle, and by the time you look to, hey, Lou, you ready? He's drunk or passed out. But he still has got this yearning to get out. That's the best thing to do. Who is he going, head first into the rail? Yeah, he was going to go across over there. And you got him by the ankle? Yeah. Lucky fucker. You know me. Good shot. It's a good shot. Now obviously he's rode before, and he's also another one of these guys that if he's not too plowed, you can leave your gear right there with him and say, oh, Lou, you want to watch her? I'll be back. And he will. If he has, he has a fifth with him, or he might not be awake to watch it for you, but definitely trustworthy. And this last time, you know, he said, Barry, if you will you take me there to have her, you know, make sure I ride the same train? Yeah, Louie, I will. But then when here come the hot shot in, and when they change crews in my not like that, they only take it like somewhere between three minutes to maybe five at the most. And then when a hot shot picks up, they pick up fairly fast, so you have to get right on it. You have to look up the line there to see what car you ride. We had to walk about maybe 100 yards. Old Louis started walking, and, and just all them drunks underneath him, man, his legs were wobbly, you know, and I felt for him. And, and I knew that if I didn't get my stuff on, you know, that if I went back to get Louis' stuff, uh, we wouldn't make it, you know. And, and then plus the fact I've done that before. We've gone back and missed it, gone back and missed it. that old soldier he wants to die in the field he doesn't want to die in a nursing home taken care of by the state you know some woman there that's there comes in in the morning and wraps your arm for pissing the bed because you're 92 years old and you can't help yourself he wants to die out there with dignity but he feels like he's part of something out there there's a certain honor out there among the people that travel
Americans are made up of transient people. So many people change state to state, move around for the jobs, you know, relocate. I started out traveling on merchant ships, Korea, Formosa, Japan, Philippines, Borneo, and went over to Vietnam. And when I went over to Vietnam, I got a job with hauling ammunition up the river, operated CAT. They actually babysitted the military. And then I met my old lady over there after a few years, married her. She was Vietnamese. Came back in uh, April of 75, three days before it fell. That was a fiasco. In the last, uh, say, 10 years, we just uh, raised pigs. I got a small little place up in the Olympic Mountains, and I got a 14 year old daughter at home, Poppy. The other two kids I've got are Min and Wick. One's in the Air Force and the other one's working at Sears. And me and the wife, ex-wife, we've been split for going on seven years. The other two are grown up, but I still got Poppy. You know. Well, travel alone between Minot and Haver was, it was a pretty good mention because it's uh, basically farmland without many houses. So you really don't have uh, things to divert your, your thought. You see your thoughts so, uh, went back to home, went back to things that you'd done in the past, but went back to your family life. Then you get kind of a melancholy thing where you can talk to yourself or you start singing to yourself. But this aloneness brings this uh, kind of thought pattern out that you wouldn't normally get in your day-to-day -day life is too fast, too much involved, and here there's nothing. Outside of saying you've thought everything you could say, but there all of a sudden there's one more thing that hasn't been thought. And now you got that time to do it, like spending time in jail. Nothing else to think about except just to think. I think a majority of the people that do travel are old, older. And they travel from this and this and this, and they work a little here, and they'll work a little there, and they'll hold up for the winter. Usually I'm, I'm gone for so many months, and then I'm back. And, and usually it's kind of like that old saying, uh, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I think it's that shot that uh, it's the fact that there's so many laws about do this, do that, don't do this, sign, sign, can you see the sign? Is your dog shit on my neighbor's lawn and I'm gonna take you to court and, uh, and you better fill out this paper and fill out that paper and do this and do that, that he wants out of it. He, it, all of a sudden, he doesn't even feel like he's his own person anymore because it's just the fact that familiarity breeds contempt. And maybe that's the thing that makes riding those rails kind of attractive because you're not offering not so much a physical threat but an emotional and a mental threat. It's freedom from this earth, freedom, not freedom to die, but freedom of gravity, freedom of air, freedom of different stuff. And it's kind of like that song, King of the Road. You know, ain't got no bills, ain't got no cigarettes, ain't got this, but then you don't worry about them when you ain't got it. You know, this planet travels 5,800 miles an hour around. We are a traveling spaceship, even though we're in an orbit. I think I heard that repeated one time on the, the history of flight, even when they flew out over the Greek islands and the feathers that were made of wax and so on, and, and beyond that, the Wright brothers, that what is, a, what is the goal of that? And it's freedom.
Oh, it's cold, 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 cold. Oh, oh it's cold, cold, cold. Hey, 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 over you. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Hot pussy, hot pussy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, yeah, uh, Mountain Jenny. Hey, oh, 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 Ever. 22 miles. Hey, 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 Fire. Fire is the biggest, probably the first thing I look forward to. The biggest problem you have with fire is landing near the city because you can't light one up. But out here in Montana, it's loose enough. You get just build a fire, get your shit laid out, you know, and uh, and get under cover so you don't get rained on. It can get cold. And uh, it, even if you're not geared down too much, that fire is the biggest thing you think about. This place really has kind of a special shop for me because Pete and I have jungled up here a lot before. And Pete, you know, Seattle Slim's my old running partner. Trestle right overhead when the trains roll by. This is one of the places that uh, Seattle Slim and I held over going or coming. Any which way we were going, we've even doubled back from Spokaloo, from Missoula, jungled across the bridge, jungled back over there, jungled back where we jungled. So I, I feel good about this place. It's Montana. Their cowboy boots are a little thicker. <laughs> Haver's a nice little town. Typical Western. In fact, I think that's where that song comes from, smack dab in the middle of Montana. And everything is close to the tracks. Even you ditch your gear and you walk up, you're right there in town. The town looks like the old west. It's all wood and boardwalks and so on. And not that I went to any, but they got like gambling whorehouses, all that kind of stuff in there. I didn't go. To, I didn't even gamble. But these people in Montana and Idaho are like workers. They're either working farming or they're working the oil rigs or they're wildcatters or whatever else. So they understand the hardships. Hey, Warren. Hey. Ed again. How you doing? All right. Good. Hey, is Poppy around? No, she's not. Do you know if uh, she's probably still over at Barbara's, right? No, I think so, yeah. You don't know if she's got a phone over there, do you? God, I don't know the number. Yeah. W hey. When is she supposed to be due back tonight? Well, I don't know what time, but uh, she said she'd be back. What? Uh, fact, what time, I don't know. OK. Well, if you, uh, what time, uh, uh, like after 10 is kind of, uh, that's getting a little late, right? To give you a call. Ten? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 that's not too late. All right, thanks, Warren. All right, hey. Yeah. You got another unemployment check. And oh. I left a message for you. Oh. But, uh, but Poppy's got to take care of it. And, uh... Well, I'm going to give you a call back tonight. Okay. All right, take care. Goes. All right, bye. Have you had a chance to meet the Lord yet? I've always known the Lord here, John. You know, I, you know I, got to, I deal with the Lord in my own way, you know? Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, he loves you, and he cares for you. Otherwise, uh, a beautiful, nice, cool autumn, cool autumn day now. Mm -hmm.
Big Red out of Haver. Born again Christian, seen the light, stands about 6'4". He weighs about 300 pounds. He's got a huge gut. I really can't see how he could get onto a, you know, a freight train at this time. And he's more of a home guard. He's found himself a home in the mission down there, and that's where he's going to stay for a while until the people, you know, get so tired of him, get so rude with him that he might pull out. But I really doubt it. And I think probably at one time he probably drank a lot, and he was one mean son of a bitch. And he probably somewhere down the line did something that he's very sorry about. Not because he turned towards Christianity, but just because he almost makes it a point like a drug counselor who used to be an addict. They got to beat that drum hard just to keep their own self off of it. And he seems like he beats his drum hard to keep himself pumped up, which is, that's what it takes, that's what it takes. There's something good. I think, I think Russia finally has made its point. They're sneaking in, playing the good side. They can get more with the honey than they could with fighting. Mm -hmm. Down the line, though, I'm calling it. Beware. They're going to come back, and they're going to hit us hard without that you know, They're going to come in under defense. And yeah, think, but they could, they could feel I it. think they're going to finally do it. Really, because we're we, going to drop our guards. But we, we, don't, we don't control people uh, no, we don't. physically. We control them economically. Right. But I think the things that are wrong about this country is that the rich are way ahead of the poor. This will always be. Uh, the middle class are way ahead of the poor. And the semi-middle class, which is in the poor, around 20, 22,000 will always be. But the poor poor, which are struggling from day to day, from mission to mission as they travel, and these are the real poor, that don't have a roof over their heads and use boxcars for a roof, if, thing, if things don't change, I see a revolt in the United States coming, where all the poor are going to get together. They're going to all meet in this one area, and they're going to march on Washington, D.C., and they're all going to come in by truck, by car, by how they can get there. And they are going to walk on Washington, D.C., and Washington, D.C. won't be able to stop them, because they'll come with guns, clubs, knives, whatever they can get and you'll have a civil war on your hands, and we're heading for another civil war. It would be nice if they did it like Martin Luther King did it, do it in a, on a peaceful shot. It won't happen this way. Peacefulness is not for this time. For war. War is. And I'm sorry to say it, but war is. And we got to have a civil war right here in the United States in order to break Congress's back. And the best time to pull it off is when we're having a war overseas. This would break the backs of Congress and it would really push us into a hole. You know, that's a, what he says, Bobby, I think it's kind of like true. You know, you take a people, uh, maybe, maybe this country has really got to be thankful that there is so much drugs and crack and everything else out in the street because if the people, what are people usually like if, they, if there's no alcohol? Not all people, but just a population, no alcohol, no drugs, no any kind of, uh, what do you call it, substitute for life. What are the people usually like? They're warlike. Hi. Hi. Farm? Yeah. How you doing? Pretty good. How you been? Oh, fine. Getting big. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. I heard. Hey, is Pop there? Yep. One more time? Okay. Hello? Oh, long lost daughter. Oh, hello, long lost father. Oh, oh hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hey, uh, I heard you broke down and told Rhonda that you missed me the other day. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey. You broke down, huh? I do. Did you go to the orthodontist? Yeah. Did you? I Oh, in three weeks, good. Hey, did you still you still doing good on those grades, huh? That's right. All right, all right. Got the next thing you know, college, huh? You going to school tomorrow? Yep. You sure? I'm coming. All right. So everything else is cool, huh? Yep. Farm's running good, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be catching a train out tonight. Oh, really? Yeah, we're going up in the Rockies, but uh, so I'll give you a buzz. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll talk to you in a bit. All right. Take it easy, Bob. Bye bye. I ain't getting married again, and I don't want.
want the, you know, who are you going with and don't. I'm not jealous, and I don't want them jealous. You know, and, I, and uh, it's, uh, you know, to stay independent. And I try to really instill that in my daughters, too. My daughter, my daughter now, because the other daughter's growing up, but be independent, man. Be your own person. I said, get some shit going for you uh, besides just your ass, because the next thing you know, you're married to some guy, and he gets pissed off at you, and he's going to leave, and you ain't got no other shit going for you, so you're going to stay with this, this son of a bitch because you ain't got nowhere else to go. You know, the ten bar flies, and I don't put them down, but the two ten chicks you meet out of a bar they take home when you fuck that are drunk. They're, uh, one of those other ones, if you have to wait three months, is worth it. Because all of a sudden, somebody loves you. And they don't have to love you to marry you and picket fence, but for that night, they do. And you love them. And that's worth a, uh, hundreds of those others. Even though I can't say that I have done, I've done hundreds of those others. And I'm not saying because I'm good learn. It's just the fact that I sailed on merchant ships and went to, you know, Korea and uh, Philippines and all those places who have thousands and tons of whorehouses. And I loved them little whores. They were great. I mean, they were, they were looking for a bond, too. And, and I treated them well. I mean, I didn't get a lot of money, but I tried to get them off. You know, I didn't just consider myself either. So, in fact, that was my goal, man, to get one of the little whores. In fact, my, my whole goal, in fact, in life there for a long time, rather than being a pig farmer, I wanted to be a cowboy in a Korean whorehouse. I really wanted that job. But fuck, I had to, there was, that line was so long I'd be dead by the time I got it, you know, so. But they were, they were, they were uh, people too, you know. I guess you can even refer to the Bible with Mary Madeline, or I guess if you want to go there, but whores are people, prostitutes are people, and they're, they're eking out a living, and what's your moral judgment of them, and what their moral judgment of deal is, is really not, not even related. Because they're out there surviving, you know. Or maybe I took that attitude on from, Oh, I, I'm not a vast member in A, but I think A is a good organization, but that same saying they got, accept the things you cannot change, you know, and change the things you can, and hope the shit you got the wisdom to know the difference. You know, come to think about, or maybe I, you answer questions like that, or you say things like that different at different times, I guess. But right now, in my mind, the big thing, take them out of here. All right. Junior engineer, I yeah, banged in the cars. He was sent a memo to Burlington. feeling and the saddest feeling you get is when you haven't ridden for a while and then you start to ride because it takes that two weeks or whatever it is to get adjusted in shape onto the grit knowing what you're doing putting up with the shit and then you're up with it but I would say the biggest thing is basically have nothing in your pocket you know because you always seem like you're generating something you go out and you chop wood and you make 20 bucks or so you always keep that five bucks rattled like going into a bar asking for a job. If you can't go in there and get a cup of coffee first, it puts you in another shot. It goes to show you that that pride is more important than food. That pride is what can kill you. That's probably the biggest thing I preach to my kid. You know, if you gotta bring yourself to beg it, then beg it, but don't steal it. I kind of got this from pictures where you see like this kind of funny evaluation like concentration camps, where the people were just stripped of everything, raw. You know, women, kids, everything naked. And you take all that nakedness and you take all that just standing there, man, with all your shit hanging. What do you got? All you got is your word. 
and your honor. So I guess you could say that gives you dignity, you know, no matter who you are. Your personal honesty, knowing what you know inside is what you are. Knowing yourself. And then the next best thing to work on is liking what you know. Test for you. Once you come through that, you feel more strength in yourself. The fact that you're surviving it. Peace to say it keeps you from suicide. Bare simplicity, right down to the raw. Across the field, dreams of trouble. Spokaloo. Spokaloo is a good place to go in, to hit the mission, get provisions, and get out. I don't like Spokane. They don't hit you over the head down there. They just wait for you to pass out. Pete's got a name for them. The pickers, the pick, the pickers. So I'll wait for these guys to come off the apples and so on. And, and usually it's the guys that drink pretty heavy because they're they got a habit to feed. Walking down out the uh, Yardley Yard in uh, Spokaloo, walking up the track towards the bridge. Just got up near that uh, little stockyard up there, and I seen this guy walking down. And he looked all real familiar because we, we used to ride out of Pasco. And there he was, and I kind of looked at him. He didn't recognize me right off, you know. And he said, they, then he did, you know. And I said, hey, Duffy, and we shook hands and someone like that. And I said, you're still living under here, and that's been two months since I seen him. And he had a regular little routine down. He'd go down and get his cans, make about 20 bucks a day. 
hit the slab lab, the blood bank, twice a week. And uh, that was getting hard on him. And he's got quite a little past. But he takes care of business, so he goes and gets his cans, and he doesn't ask nobody for nothing. You know, and he, that's the kind of guy I like. If you see a, and I don't know if you ever, you ever was on the trains with the airplane parts on it. They're going into Seattle. They got those fucking look like armored cars on it. Yeah, yeah. But that's the way you can always tell. You can tell this train's coming from Portland because it's just loaded with cars. And I bet you if you go over and look close, every one of them is either a damn Mitsubishi or a Toyota. But then, of course, it is very seldom that lumber goes low line. Is that right? Most of your lumber goes high line. Goes high line. Well, oh, I'm tired. Yeah, I agree. And I ain't really done nothing today. It's been a slow day for me. Uh, it, well, it's kind of like a kind of maybe rain, maybe we're dead. He homesteaded that little, that bridge. That's the first bridge you usually kind of hook out bridge. So Duffy's kind of a sober guy. We got along good. And he says, you serious about collecting cans? I said, yeah. He said, well, said, we got a few cans we want to get rid of. You know, so we live three blocks away. I said, okay. I said, I'll meet you over there. So they gave me the address. I went over there. They gave me 48 pounds of cans. I mean, bags like you never saw before. No Yugoslavian recipe. Yeah, let me pour some of this water off here. And that's your dinner. Madonna appears in a public service announcement urging people to vote. Sounds patriotic enough, but the veterans of foreign wars, they're angry. She emerges from the American flag things. in red bra, panties, and combat this boots, describing mother. free speeches as good as sex. The goddamn gives a fuck if she comes out there naked. So what? For Sunday, it's gonna be cloudy with she was the first one who ever started wearing a bra on the outside of the damn... No. What the fuck? Right I tell you, the day that I fucking don't want to see some good-looking broad tits, man, then I'm gonna go get my dick cut. It's all right. If I could collect 438,000 cans, I'm getting silly dentures. I've been doing this for a while now, and I think in terms of cans. How many cans is it going to take for me to go buy this? How many cans is it going to take to buy me a pair of gloves? How many cans is it going to take to buy me a piece of pussy? Everything's stuff in terms of cans or stamps. It's worth looking in a phone book, see if they got a dental college on there. Sometimes you, yeah, I know University of Washington you got. You know, it's Spokane, Washington. My adopted city. I was born and raised in the great state, great state, the backward state of Kentucky. What is there to tell? Why I came out here on the trains? Well, I guess when I started this stuff, I lived in New York. And uh, I had a couple problems. One of them was drinking. I used to be a hell of an alcoholic. Second was my marriage. I married witch. No. I was a pretty successful person. Worked for a major advertising firm. Every credit card known to man. And uh, thought I was happy. 
Good to leave the bottle alone. Part of my job. We had functions going on all the time. Lunches with clients. And, uh, I would never admit that I was an alcoholic. Anyway, one night, you know, drunk. Yeah. Sitting at the bar, drinking. Didn't want to go home because I was having a lot of problems with my marriage then. And the bartender, who was a good friend of mine, called my wife to come pick me up. She came, didn't have a babysitter. She brought two kids. She didn't want me to drive. I insisted on driving. Got in a wreck. Killed my wife and two kids. Became worse than ever. Became a hell of an alcoholic after that. Lost my job, my home, everything I had. Went to nothing. Woke up one morning, in the gutter. Decided I'm then I was gonna stop drinking. Didn't go to no detox program, didn't go to AA, just stopped. Didn't do nothing to ever bring back my family. Everybody turned against me. Seemed like they couldn't. Keep reminding me of what I'd done. So, uh. Tried to start all over again and move to another state. Remarried. Stopped drinking. Everything was going fine for a while. Except I kept having these nightmares. Kept seeing the crash. drove me to the point where I didn't want to be around anybody anymore for any reason. I just wanted to be alone. Looking for a way. Never been on a freight before in my life. One day decided to hop one. Wasn't going nowhere. Got on it. Ended up in Pennsylvania. Seemed to be the life. Fourteen years ago. When I say I stopped drinking, let me clarify this. Still drink beer every now and then, once a week, once every two weeks. I don't drink nothing else. Now I'm doing nothing. Out here, riding the train, traveling from state to state. Fucking former executive of a big corporation. Out here picking up cans, selling blood. Guess that's what this country's all about. What am I gonna do in the future? I ain't gonna do this forever. I don't know. That's why I'm out here on the rails. I guess I'll spend the rest of my life trying to run away from something that I did that I can never correct. I just might as well have taken a gun and shot three people. I killed three people.
They do have a tendency to let them pile up just before the weekend. Oh, yeah. When Friday, Thursday, Friday, they roll like a bastard. Wednesday, they start to roll. Yeah, we'll definitely get out of here this morning. I think so. Anyway, we will be in Wenatchee sometime today. Or tonight, or tomorrow. Or possibly Sunday, time to church. You might have to go way the hell down the track. There's no longer regard the U.S. and the dollar and safe haven. KQ Lions, CNN Business News, New York. The Wall Street Journal, use an idea you need every business day. And the 120-page guide, which tells you everything you want to know about money and investing. All for $34. Don't miss out on this special offer from the Wall Street Journal. Call now, rule free in the continental U.S. 800-3. My mouth fell off again. Uh, now, I'll never know what's going to happen in Iraqi.
Wenatchee is an apple town, and that's that, where that little joke comes from, you know, where the girl's driving up and says, Mommy, is that the hobo? And she said, No, that's an apple picker, because at the beginning of the season. And then she says, about a month later, she says, Mommy, is that that apple picker? No, that's a hobo, because you get the apples picked and they want you out. The apple harvest should be completed in a few days. So that puts that out. Mm. Okay, well, yeah. Let me see. Uh, restaurant. They want an IRCA certificate, whatever that is. I'm not sure I don't have it. Standard, standard machinery. Carbon. Well, these are all out of state over here. You gotta have your own tools. Must be 55 years of age. Well, Oh, no. <laughs> Forget it. Don't look at me. 55. Could you say anything in Wenatchee that could possibly uh, we could work into? Because if not, I do see down here where they're asking for uh, harvesting cauliflower, winter squash, but this is down in Oregon, you know, and I may head down to Oregon since there's really nothing that I see here in Wenatchee. Uh, yeah, I know. Most of, this, most of this stuff, they won't pay you for two weeks. It was a good idea coming up here, but unfortunately, I don't really see anything that we can use. Okay. Through faith in Christ Jesus, all scripture is God breathed. No comprende. No comprende. So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Amen. You think we'll get a train today? No. You really don't? No, I think we're good. Well, it's Friday. Yeah, it was kind of cold last night. And I definitely have to catch out today. And I have decided that since you're going to Seattle, and I appreciate the invitation, but I, I have to get down to Oregon. Uh, I think we might have time for the coffee, you know, because... Oh, you got business conference or something? Well, no. I'm... Executive meeting? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't want to miss a train, you know, because I've missed so many trains and end up on the wrong train. I really think it's time I caught the right one for it's a change. Right yeah. yeah. And plus, I don't think there's a bull in this yard, but I got to be careful of the bull. I don't see Speaking. a bull anywhere. Do you oh. see a bull? Oh, here comes the train. Oh, just, that one's mine. Just units. Oh, it's just the power. Yeah. yeah. Uh. You know, I don't. That, did that guy say that? Uh, Nothing makes up for Spokane down there? I kind of doubt it, too, don't well, you? Well, I may have to walk up the track. So well, I mean, if down nothing way makes up down there. Yeah. Three units, that's going to Seattle. I mean, I'm serious. You know, I really think that I have to get going. So, I would stick around for the coffee, but, you know. You got, you're not going to stick around for a cup of coffee? I doubt it. It must be that. I, I really got to get out of here. Uh, Sure you don't want a cup of coffee? No, man. I'm going to go down here in the yard and check out and see what's happening, you know, and probably catch up from down there. You know. It's been nice knowing you. Well, you too, yeah. Joe. You take we'll it probably easy, man. run into each other again, you know, oh. somewhere along the rails. Sure, we will. You got no probably smokes? Next year, yeah, I got plenty of smokes. I got plenty of food, you know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay back to Spokane. You know, I'll bet you, I don't know, but I'll, I'll bet you that bull ain't hanging around, you know. And. They're all packed up? Yep. And you haven't put any yeah. surprises in that here. This thing's three times as heavy as when I brought it up here. Oh, just a small snake. I don't know what in the hell I'll find in there when I get back. I don't think he's dead yet. Okay. So, you take it easy. All right, you too, Joe. We'll catch you on down the line. All right. Okay. Take care of yourself. All right.
Keep, keep the wind to your back. And remember, if you got a, you know, if you got a broken rubber in one pocket and a rattlesnake in the other, don't fuck with either one of them. Oh, I won't. <laughs> Next time I see you, I'll have some cooked up for you. All right, I enjoyed All right. the last one. You take it easy. Hi, right, you too. Okay. I want to make it a happy little homecoming for you, right? Uh -huh. But I, I'm going to mess you up, too. Why? Uh, because. Don't you know why? Uh -uh. You don't think I know? No, I don't know. You know, oh, you don't know what I know, right? No, I don't know why. Well, you don't know what I know. What do you know? What do I know? Yeah. yeah we can check it out. You want to put Lyle on the phone or you want to check? I mean, you know how many okay. days you missed of school. No, because I didn't you missed a lot of days of school. Because I came in late. Oh, yeah. Every time is being absent. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Staying with Barbara and you're gonna miss time. All right, so I want you home today. Okay, when are you coming home? Oh, I'm coming home tonight. Okay. I'll be there, but I want you to go home today. Okay. I, d I mean it, Bob. And what's the deal about the assault shit? I mean, okay, I sympathize with you in no, a way. Um, but the thing about it is, is you know already the fact that we're on the line. What kind of questions did he ask you about the farm? Uh, the cop. What was the name of the cop? Uh, Officer Friendly. Officer Friendly? Who's he? I know, I know who he is. He's oh, I know. He said he knew he worked. So how does he figure I'm not in a in normal environment? I don't know. He just said that, you know, I, he asked for my address, and I gave it to him. He goes, oh, you live there? I said, yeah. Well, you yeah, know. you should have said, what makes you think you come from one? Yeah, you know, yeah. that's what I was saying. And he was just like, you know, I just don't think that you have a, a normal environment. First of all, it's none of his business. Yeah, I know. Uh, but anyway, man, the fact is, is, see, all of this stuff could be challenged to him real easily and anybody else. But do you know what tears it down? But you missing school and you being late. It doesn't matter whether you made it or not or something, you're oh, late. Oh, I know. And I now am I going to have to go back into the court system? Uh-uh, because uh, he just talked to me about it. He said, well, since you came in late, he has to count me as being absent, but he's not going to. Um, I don't know if he said that. Um, well, because I asked him not to do anything until I got back. I told He, he said that. Um, I told him I came, I came to school every day this week if I came in late. He told me you did. I've been calling on you, too. Is Barbara with you now? Yeah. Of course. Okay. We're at school. Yeah, well, I know, I know, but it's just like, you know, you better start thinking of the fact that you live out there. I don't care whether you hang around with Barbara or not, but you better figure you're going to have other friends, too. Okay, you're going to be home tonight. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Maybe I am toying with somebody's life, but everybody that is with somebody, everyone that has a kid toys with their life, in a sense. You're an influence no matter what. But I think there's a fine line there. there there's that sensibility line, which keeps you halfway in tone, keeps you alive, right? And then there's that wild line that actually keeps you moving on. But there's that fine line where you can have that spirit and yet have that safety zone at the same time. And uh, I just have to be me.